If you're by the water this weekend, we've got the tips for you. Whether you're fishing in the plentiful lakes or along the pristine coast, anyone can land their biggest catch from piers, docks, and jetties here on the Texas Insider Fishing Report, which starts now. Welcome to the Texas Insider Fishing Report. Presented by Yamaha. Welcome to the Texas Insider Fishing Report. This week we're getting all of you on some fish and the beauty is it doesn't matter if you have a boat. Rick, why can fishing from piers and docks and jetties be so productive this time well, of year? Well, Bree, and I nailed you at the top, you but did you know what? Me. The cool, I'm so excited about this show tonight. And the reason why, it's the first time this season yes. where freshwater and saltwater come together with a common denominator. Yeah. Fishing under docks, fishing structure, fishing from rocks. Guess what? Our captains are going to have a lot of similarity in right. the way they approach everything. So I can't wait to, for over the next hour to share that with you guys. You're absolutely right. All right. Well, sounds like a late summer plan to me. But before we see where we're fishing first, let's head to the workbench and say hi to Dave Farrell and our special guest, Mike McFarland, our guide from the Upper Fresh region. Mike, welcome. Yeah, we got Mike all the way from Lake Fork. Woo! And he's going to show us how he targets bass under docks. So we're going to be doing a little freshwater part on this. He's going to afford to. Yeah. He's gonna put a fork in it. He's gonna put oh a fork my in God. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. That was like that was one so of your things. me. I'm I'm very proud. All right, well let's start out by visiting the docks and piers in the lower fresh region and see what Matt Reed says we're catching. Go for it, Matt. All right, guys, let's just get this thing rolling. Yeah, we're gonna start off talking about piers and docks. I mean that can be a wonderful way to experience some great fish catches when you don't have access to a boat. You know, a little research of your area lakes and rivers will expose marinas, state parks, and other type of things that uh, that have areas for public fishing. Uh, you know, and there's always a bunch of species readily available. Uh, just for fun and action, uh, great for kids and, and grown-ups that won't, won't just catch fish, the bluegill is your easiest target. Earthworms or crickets under a bobber around the docks are nearly a guaranteed way to success. Uh, that's just the way we all started as kids, and it's still a great way to have fun. Uh, crappie are another common fish around the marina docks. Small winnow minnows are the best attack. Uh, man, that makes great table fare, and there's plenty of them to be had. If you're hungry for catfish, try doe bait on the bottom. Uh, those really, you know, they love to be around those marinas and docks. There's, there's tons of cover there that give, give them lots of habitat. And if you want to fish for largemouth bass, there's always a good population relating to those docks. Uh, Texas Rig Plastic Worms or Wacky Rig Berkeley Generals, that's a great way to catch them. Uh, the biggest thing is to just get out and enjoy the water. Piers and docks open up the possibilities to everyone. Let's move on down and start talking about our largemouth bass. Uh, Falcon Lake, uh, the bass are pretty much still on the same pattern as last week. Uh, there's some good numbers available in shallow water in two to five feet. I'm catching them on a 3 16th ounce shaky head with a green pumpkin general. Uh, but I definitely spend most of my time looking for the big ones out on the main lake rock structure and man-made brush piles. Texas, big, Texas rig big worms have been the best option in plum or blue fleck. Keep after them and you'll always catch some good ones. Brian Cotter sent me a report from the Austin area. Lake Travis is fishing pretty good. Schoolies are still the ticket with the best action around the deep marinas on the main lake. Uh, there's also a bit of them schooling in the deep coves near, you know, near the main lake, not way back in, but out toward the front. Uh, use jay walkers uh, or small straight tail swim, swim baits to catch those fish that are surface schooling. Uh, swim baits, you just want to let it free fall through them and they'll pick it up on the fall. Uh, for some, some later fish, you want to work the deep ledges and points with finesse jig, shaky head, and Texas rigs. Uh, and that way, out in that 20 to 30 feet of water, you might catch you a big one later on in the day. Lake Bass Trop is doing well. Uh, schooling activity has been hit or miss, but there's consistent fish along the dam lately. I uh, just work a Texas rig soft plastic, either a creature bait or, you know, a, a general, uh, and you'll catch those fish relating to the rocks. A jerk shed or a shaky head along the grass edges is getting some bites as well. Lake Decker is fishing well. Uh, you want to work the edge of the reeds on the main lake with five inch worms to get those fish to bite. 
And if you just want to have some fun, downsize your baits to a real small worm or a tiny little beetle spin, you're going to catch a variety of fish. Bluegill, sunfish, crappie, and bass are all biting that type of thing, and that can make a fun field day at the lake. I got three bass pictures coming up there. Uh, all three of these are falcon fish from some young guys I've had this week. Wow. Uh, we've got Austin, Ethan, and Joe, all with nice chunks from down here in South Texas, and not a one of them is boiled yet in this heat. All right, bud. Ooh. Thank you so much. Way to start us off tonight. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the lower fresh region hotspots. Matt Reed says, look for Decker, uh, or Lake Decker is fishing well. Work the edges of the reeds on the main lake with five inch worms to get those bass to bite. And if you want lots of bites, downsize to small worms, crawl worms, or tiny beetle spins, and you'll get plenty of bluegills, sunfish, crappies, and bass for a fun filled day out there on the lake, Bree. Those are some nice fish, and you know what? It's consistent pretty much every week. Absolutely. So good. Yeah. All right. Well, there are lots of pier and jetty options that could land you the fish of a lifetime in the lower coast region. So let's see what direction Captain Chad Kinney is pointing us in. Go for it, Chad. Tell you what, things are really shaping up. Looks like we're finally getting a break again in the wind and some heat actually coming up. So this weekend should be great, great fishing. Uh, September 9th is coming up. we got the Wahoo Classic. Uh, that's a great tournament there out of South Padre Island. But talking about the jetties, your docks, your piers, I love this stuff. You know, I grew up all around it, still fish it. So fishing from these jetties, you know, docks, piers, great way to fish. I enjoy the day uh, without having to launch your boat. Or if you don't have a boat, it's a great, really great way to do it. You know, jetties are really good right now for some redfish action. And there's some trout all, also around mixed in there, and they'll be going through here all the way through fall. If you're fishing in the piers, like in the bay system, uh, they're holding a lot of good trout uh, fishing, especially at night if you get any access to lights at night. There's lots of school trout, uh, lots of action with some keepers mixed in. It's great for, you know, family, kids, anybody get out there. And that's, that's the way I grew up and spent a ton of time out there. If you're fishing off, you know, docks and stuff like that or banks and stuff like that, just kind of look around, check out the waters you're fishing, look for bait movement and some coves or some good watercolor, a little tide movement, and get there early. You can try some mirror lure top waters early. I like using that stuff when you're working off that area there. And if you're in the middle of the day, then it gets a little hot warmer, maybe free line some live bait whether it's a live shrimp, your croaker, or a live mullet. And uh, you, the good thing is you never know what you're really gonna catch on this stuff. You know, it could be a trout, it could be a small red, it could be a drum, it could be a big red, you just, you just really never know. So take some time off and go venture out with some of this stuff that's like that. It's great with the kids or your buddies and hit some of these destinations in the lower coast. Got a picture of Bones who works for me in Bam Bam Charter. So this guy loves fishing. When he's, when he's off the water, we're not fishing for some reason. He went to the cove right there and he got a big bull red. Yeah, man. Go Bones. Yeah, so you can you can definitely catch them off the banks there, so in the pier. So going to move into talking about the inshore, the redfish have been around those jetties and the trout are in the grass bed still around that four to five foot of water. And they're also along that ICW, basically from the land cut all the way to South Padre. That trout fishing is remaining really good in the lower coast. So they're kind of hiding those deeper grass beds in the sand pockets. Uh, looks like we're definitely getting a break in the weather like that. So I think it's really going to be a good trout bite early in a.m. coming up like that in these grass beds. Live croakers working really good. Uh, saltwater assassin sea shad's really good if you're using a soft plastic, that magic glass with an eagle claw. Uh, eight ounce jig head works really good. Uh, work those breaks with the grass beds and deeper in the sand pockets there. It's been a really early bite, so if you can, get out there by about 6.30 a.m. and get some fishing time in after the trout bite slows down, which it will. It'll be like a light switch almost, then you can head up to the jetties for some redfish action. Talking about offshore, offshore is really kind of picking up. It's my favorite time of year. I've been talking about for raw mouth for September. You can target pretty much anything out there right now. You, the Dorado bite's actually a lot better than I've seen in a long time. Some black tuna, amberjack season's open. Pelagic's out there, you can hit those amberjacks around wrecks and structures. The Dorado, like I mentioned, uh, they're in good numbers right now. There's lots of chicken Dorado and some few bigger ones, some cows and bulls in the mix. Uh, they've been catching them pretty much around the shrimp boats, and especially if you can find anything floating debris, of course, you're gonna be holding tight around that stuff. Control some uh, Islander daisy chains that we talked about earlier in the season, about making your own daisy chain with Islanders, that works great or you can pull a single Islander lure wig with a little gr a greenback ballet here works really good. Charlie's at like seven and a half to eight knots. There's been some really good action and good numbers. Remember these Dorado can grow up to like 35 pounds a year. They're really, really fast. So be getting into a whole bunch of small ones and they're in good shape. You know, take what you want for dinner and release the rest. They'll get a lot bigger quick by the end of the season. Got a picture here of a South Padre Island, a Sea Rebel uh, with a good Dorado right there. Nice. Moving over to Amberjack. And they're, they're plentiful out there in the wrecks. So if you guys want an Amberjack, get a 10 spinning rod. I like about a 16, 6500 with that with a blue carnage jingin rod. 
you know, vertically jig some of these savage lures. Uh, I've been using these, just got off them, and they're great. They're, they're tough, and they got plenty of colors and sizes to choose from. On these amberjack, I, I go with like a five ounce jig or better and just vertically jig it, really rip it through that water column and hold on tight because these guys are bruisers, as you know, and that blue carnage rod got plenty of backbone. So when you're hitting it, you can put some really pressure on like that, that 6500 and kind of get them off that structure. If you don't want to break them off or stuff like that and you're fishing a wreck, good little trick is, you know, if you hook them up real quick, tell your buddy at the boat, push it off the, with the boat and lock that drag up and get them away from the wreck and you'll have a better chance of landing them. We've got a picture here of an amberjack with saltwater fishing charters out of South Padre Island they've been catching. All right, well, thank you all for all the pictures tonight, Chad. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the shallow sport boats, hot spots from the lower coast region. Chad says that inshore, the trout fishing is good in the lower coast along the ICW and in the grass flats in four to five feet of water. And then offshore, action is picking up with good numbers of Dorado, blackfin tunas by deeper shrimp boats. All right, the Star Tron Middle Fresh region is taking us on a little walkabout for your weekend catch. But first, Dave and Mike are giving us what we'll need to know to reel them in at the workbench for rigs and techniques. I reckon you fellas have some uh, doc talk for us. It, it, I ain't got no mouse in my pocket. It ain't Dave and Mike. It's going to be Mike. <laughs> Mike's talk. Uh, Mike, Mike and Dave. Money. And, I'm Mike. Bigger, Mike. and I'm a lot bigger than a mouse. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back. Man. The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Ameritrail, load, launch, relax. Fenwick, feel everything. Bahio sunglasses, blue light blocking, radically clear lenses. Sportsman's Adventures with Captain Rick Murphy, fishing for adventure. Berkeley, your fish, our science. And Skeeter Performance Fishing Boats, eat, sleep, fish. Well, we're here at the workbench here, gonna do some rigs and techniques. We got Mike McFarland our, from our upper middle fresh region. And we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, bass fishing under docks. We're gonna stick with that dock theme because it's hot, hot, hot. And Definitely the bass hot. will get up underneath those docks to get out of the heat. And you're gonna tell us a little bit about how you go get them out from under there. And they like to get that. I had an old timer tell me one time they don't have eyelids, they can't hide from the sun. So they go into the docks for the shade. But let's definitely tell you a little bit about it. the first thing is we're gonna talk about is techniques. Right. One of the most important things it, that you can really, really find more success with is when you start on these docks, always start on the outside edges first. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna have posts and pillars, they may be metal, they may be wood, you're gonna have ladders, swim ladders. Start on the outside edges first. Everybody wants to get up in there and the, up uh, underneath the boat on yeah. the, and try to get up in and there first. Especially like on our northeast lakes, okay? We, most people, the fishermen put them brush piles underneath. Right. And the brush piles look so good, and you know there's fish in those brush piles, okay? Right. And so here, but here's the thing. If you throw to the brush pile first, you catch the fish that are on the brush piles, when you fight that fish coming out, you spook all the rest of them. Scare everybody else out of the hole. Scare everybody else out of the hole. So start on the outside edges first, and to then work your way underneath. Quick tip. If you throw that bait on there, and we're gonna talk about baits in a second, and mm -hmm. it gets hit, boom, boom, and takes off out of there, you know what that means? There's more fish in He's it. He's running. He's, He's running, running from his pals. He's saying, mine, I'm out of here. <laughs> so that'll keep you on that dock longer. That'll let you have confidence that there's more fish there to be caught, okay? Right. So next up, you know, uh, what kind of baits are we wanting to throw at them? I'm always a jig guy. I think jigs catch big fish. Jigs right. and bass go along. So something like a flipping jig, a Berkeley flipping jig, you can use a quarter ounce, three eighths ounce. Just turn it around a little bit. Usually I'm not going to go too much heavier than that. Um, anything shad colors sometimes if you see shad, brim colors if you're seeing brim present, and I love crawfish. It's hard to beat crawfish. Bass love crawfish. Northeast Texans love crawfish. Trailer that with that right there, the whoop across whoop bass. Across bass yeah, the, the, the thump out of these claws right here is excellent. Let's make fall slow on the posts. So you're gonna throw a jig and a bass assassin whoop across, you're gonna you're gonna get your arm hurt in Texas. So I'm doing that. Now when you're when you're doing that, are you are you trying to uh, hit the water real quiet or do you do you mind if it makes if, a little noise when it comes if in? If I'm on shallow docks, I want to be as quiet as possible presentation. So I'm going to pitch and flip it, try and make a, a soft presentation. Um, one of the keys also is make sure it has contact. It has contact with the post, contact with the wood and or the brush pile. T have targets. Don't just fish it in the open open water of the, of the dock. Okay? I got gotcha. you. And Moving next on, we're going to talk about some of the, the lighter stuff. We're going to go to a little different technique, which is going to be weightless style. We right. got three different baits that we can do. We can do a Bass Assassin Vapor Shad. 
We can do the fat job. I love that fat job. I do two of those catches, big fish. And we can do the tap out trick worm, mm -hmm. okay? All three of them we're gonna kind of rig weedless, all right? This one I like to do between the tap out and the fat job, I like to do them wacky style. What you're gonna find a lot of times with that wacky style is you can get hung up. Okay, so here's a quick tip. You're gonna put the hook in just like it is wacky style, but let's finish it. We're gonna go all the way back around, turn that EWG hook, and then reset it back in the plastic, and we still have that wacky, funny, falling presentation, but we're now weedless. Beautiful. We don't get hung up near as much. We do that with the tap out, we do that with the fat job. Now with the vapor shad, mm -hmm. okay, we're gonna use a little different hook. We're gonna wanna offset. That's, that's a regular old style worm hook. Regular old offset hook. And p most people know how to rig a Texas rig type deal. Remember we're doing this weightless. Um, but I wanna show you a little trick. So when we take these vapor shads, you know, it looks like a perfect fish. Yeah, you it, always wanna to try to fish it with the belly down, you'd think. The, we always wanna go belly down. That's what every one of us is gonna do when we take it out of the bag and we rig it just like this, text pose it, and that is weedless, and that is a great way to fish it. Mm -hmm. Here's a little pro tip, a guide tip. Actually, if we turn this upside down, right. okay, what it is is it's got a little open gap here for that hook, okay? If we turn this upside down, we rig this the opposite way, upside down. We have a weedless bait that's protected by that gap that's provided by the bait itself, but it has a flat platform that it will glide. It'll and be like a glide bait, a and miniature glide bait. Much better and different presentation than they're used to seeing. And then, of course, real simple, when the fish hits it, that hook comes exposed. Because right you got all that extra there. Because you got all there. that open, open deal right there. So right. That's my favorite way. Again, colors would be shad, brim, crawfish. Pay attention to what's in the area and match it accordingly. Are you using a, a little light spinning rod when you're using the lighter stuff and maybe I, a bait caster with the jigs? Correct, bait caster with 12 to 16 or 20 pound test in the jigs. I like the heavier stuff because I like the big fish. Yeah, yeah. And you're gonna have you know contests with the wooden things and then the wacky stuff you wanna go a little lighter. Both ways, we're using fluorocarbon line no matter what. All right, well, is there any, any other one little tip that you could give before we go? You know, I can tell you that a lot of the times the best docks to find are, are the ones that are near deep water, have either the point nearby, a break nearby, or a swing nearby of a creek. You got a lot of docks, you got a hundred docks, you wonder which ones to fish. Um, those ones that are closest to deep water. I like, I like the deep water access, because you no. know, and that's another thing, when you hook at the great big one, he heads for that same he hole heads too. For the deep water. <laughs> so deep water, ones that are closest to deep water, do a little homework and you'll find better success, especially for bigger fish on those ones. Beautiful, thanks, that was great. That was great, Mike, Thank that you. worked out good. Thank you. There you go, guys, you wanna fish a dock, that's how Whoa, you do it. <laughs> Man, nobody told me when I got out of bed this morning I was gonna learn today, but I just <laughs> learned today. And I wanna tell you, wow. Mike, that it takes a lot to impress this man, and very his, good. His jaw was on the floor. Oh, wow. Yep. Impressed. Mind blown. All right. The Star Charm Middle Fresh region is full of docks with great access. So let's hear from Matt Lowisher with the important fish catching details. Talk to us, Matt. All right, Bree. We're going to get right into it on the pier docks and jetty theme. You know, there's not a whole lot of the big, long piers in the Middle Fresh region. There are some, and there's not a ton of jetties either. There are a few rock jetties and things like that where Maybe they're protecting some marinas, stuff like that. Use them, you know, they're used as like uh, break walls uh, and that kind of thing. So, and those can both hold fish, but there is a plethora of docks. There is just tons and tons of docks on, on some of the lakes. Uh, so docks are basically one of the primary fish attractors in the Middle Fresh region. And they come in all shapes and sizes. They can all hold fish at some point throughout the year. So I'm gonna quickly break down how you can kind of determine which docks to fish on your lake and what makes them good. And then this applies whether you're fishing from a boat or from a public fishing pier, because there are plenty of options for both on a lot of our lakes. Now, there are some lakes in the Middle Fresh region that have almost no private docks due to the regulations on those bodies of water. An example of that would be Sam Raver. There's almost no private dock, but even those lakes have some type of public fishing pier or dock. I can't think of a single lake in the Middle Fresh region that doesn't have some type of public fishing dock access. Um, and then there's some of the lakes that are just absolutely full of docks, public and private, uh, like Toledo Bend or Lake Livingston. They're just covered up with them. And then there's two different types to consider as well. You've got floating docks, and then you've got some that are on piling, and then there are some that have sections of each. The good thing about all of them, though, is that they all provide really good shade and cover for the fish. And those fish, like bass and crappie especially, love to hide out around the shade because they can use that darkness to hide and ambush their prey. Then at night, 
Some of these docks also offer lights, which shine down on the water, and that kind of works in reverse order. The fish are going to often lurk outside the lights at night. They're going to be more outside the dock, and they're going to be ambushing bait fish that are attracted to the light. And the docks that have the lights shining on the water at night also tend to be some of the best ones to fish during the daytime because the fish who hang there at night are going to hang around there during the day if it provides good shade and good feeding opportunity 24 hours a day. And that's especially true if that dock has good piling or that's something that provides, uh, if it's on deeper water, just like Mike was just talking about. Topography plays a huge role in which docks the fish are going to use. For example, right now, I would fish docks that are near the mouth of the creeks or out on the main lake where there's deeper water where those fish are already kind of wanting to be. And, you know, versus like in the springtime or in the fall, you may want to target the ones that are near the backs of the creeks and things like that can be more productive. Just remember that all docks are not created equal to the fish. Uh, so look for the ones that have the right fish holding qualities and the ones that are in the right location for the season that you're fishing. Summer and winter time, you're gonna wanna think the deepest ones. And then spring and fall, you can look to some of the shallower options or even somewhere in between. So either way, you can have a lot of fun fishing docks and they're definitely uh, abundant here in the Middle Fresh region. So now we're gonna get into our largemouth bass support for the week. And we're just gonna keep it to largemouth this week uh, just for sake of time because we went through the docks and jetties theme. Um, so next week we'll get to some more species, kind of spread it out a little bit. So starting off here with the largemouth at good old Toledo Bend. First off, the lake is still on a slow, steady fall. The level now is uh, 2.75 feet low and the temperature is in the 88 all the way up to 94 degree range. The low light hours and the nighttime hours are still the most productive period. There just isn't much of a bite in the middle of the day right now, uh, but during the day is a great time to be fishing those docks. The fish are going to go to those docks for shade. They're using some of the docks, the grass, and the timber for cover in about 15 to 25 feet of water. And the worm continues to be the most consistent bait uh, with plum apple and watermelon red being the best colors in that bass assassin tap out. And then crankbaits and spoons are also good in shad colors. And we've got a photo for you of uh, my fellow guide, uh, Robert Lewis here, with a nice Toledo Bend bass they caught recently. And you see it's a bright sunny day there, so they can be caught during the middle of the day. Now uh, we're going to jump up real quick to Richland Chambers. And uh, Mr. Thurman Selman up there says that the water level is about a foot and a half low and holding in the upper 80 degree range. Bass are being caught around the creek channels and the brush in 15 feet of water. And the bass assassin RSB worm has been best for him lately in the darker color. Then down here to Sam Rayburn. Man, it's dropping like it's hot. The water level is really coming down quickly there. You know, they're drawing it down for that work they've been talking about on the dam. It's about three and a half feet low now, and it's working its way down to that six feet low mark for those repairs. The temperature there is in the upper 80, and uh, bass are holding on points and humps with deep water nearby. The Carolina rigs and the crank baits are the go-to baits, and topwater plugs can also be effective, especially if you keep your eyes peeled and find some of that schooling activity. Well, that's it for this week. Y'all go get them and have fun. All right, Matt. Thank, thank you. you so much. Great report. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Rodan Marine Systems hotspots. He says that the lakes are falling, but that's good news for the fishermen because the fish are gathering in large schools. And then the bass are being caught in dawn and at dusk hours and at night on worms, crankbaits, topwater plugs around those docks and grass and wood cover as well. All right, we're getting to know the piers, docks, and jetties of the Fish Bites Middle Coast and Upper Fresh Region, so get ready to cast, and we'll be right back. But quick, before we go, make sure to take a look at that QR code on your screen and scan away for an all-access pass to our social media outlets where you can like and follow our Instagram and Facebook pages. And to see all new fishing adventures, tips, and reports, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Captain Rick Murphy. We'll be back. The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin. The best lures, period. Berkeley, your fish, our science. Murphy's Law Sport Fishing. Book your trip today at murphyslawsportfishing.com. Tin Cup Mountain Whiskey. Shallow Sport, the Texas legend. Rodan, set it, forget it, catch more fish. And Penn, let the battle begin. Well, guys, as you can see, I'm here with Mike McFarland. Mike, tell me about this bass boat. Right here, we have a Skeeter FXR 20 
75th year anniversary, this boat's loaded. Let's show you. We've got, starting with the front lockers, two rock lockers left and right for rods. You can hold 20 rods per locker. In the center locker right here, it comes with a half a dozen, almost, a, sorry, a dozen free toggle boxes. You can fit all your gear in that. If you're a traveler, you'll be amazed at how much gear you can get right in that locker there. We have two day boxes. We have a glove box and we have a day box right here that's gonna contain all of your stuff. Keep it dry, keep it safe. It's got locks, your wallets, etc. Down in the bottom, one of the main favorite features as a guide, built-in garbage with a removable garbage tub. You can take this to the dump at the end of the day. <laughs> love it, love it. Cooler. Recycle, baby. Cooler, cooler, cooler right there. Best cooler on the market. You'll have ice left over at the end of the day in the Texas heat. It's over 100 right now. That cooler keeps it nice and cold and it keeps your ice. Tournament anglers, we've got two access lockers to your Giant live well back here, easy for coal system, so you can put your fish back and forth. You got to split in the middle to do so. You got two more dry lockers left and right for your extra gear, your rain gear. If you're a guide, you got your clients can put their purses and backpacks in the back. Here's one of my favorite things right here. As a fishing guide or a tournament angler, how many times do we get in this back locker to do something? Maybe just fill our oil pumps, change our batteries. First time engineers have engineered this. The only boat I know that gives you full access individually to every single battery one at a time, awesome. And then powered by the best, most reliable, powerful engine, the Yamaha Show VMAX 250. This boat could not be rigged any better. 75th year anniversary, you're gonna love it. Guys, if you have any questions, just understand that all the Skeeters come with the hot foot, as well as the Yamaha pre-rigs, as well as you can get your assortment of power poles, trolling motor packages, and whatnot. If you want more information about this Skeeter, you can go to skeeterboats.com. Right, Bree? Absolutely, looking good, guys. All right, if the temps have been a little too much for y'all lately in the Fish Bites Middle Coast region, Captain Bank Grimes has the perfect solution to get you on some fish and keep you cool. Go for it, Bank. I'll tell you, docks, piers, and jetties have been the spot to beat the heat lately. It's been a great place to set up at night under light and work the water with soft plastics and live shrimp. Our rivers are running really green right now, salty. Uh, as well due to severe drought we're expansion those piers are coughing up fish at night there are tons of spots to walk in and fish without a boat up and down the middle coast right now the docks piers and jetties are the hottest uh, hot spots on the coast to beat that heat the areas around pasco Valley have been good as well uh, tide running trout entering exiting the pass with the current have uh, been good on soft plastics like mirror lures fast assassins and the purple uh the mirror lure little demons uh Guide Lynn Smith said he's been heading uh, along the south reaches of San Antonio Bay over that sand and grass and caught uh, fish on small topwaters, waiting with soft dines as well, uh, posted up on the edges of the reef, uh, throwing live shrimp as well for boaters. In Palacios, waders have had to uh, work harder for trout on windy days on the south shoreline. It's becoming calm finally around here. It's been a, a real blustery uh, summer, but our our, our our winds are calming down and it's allowing the tide to come in. Nearby Coon Island has improved. Uh, we're getting better tides right now. The live shrimp has been best for uh, trout around Half Moon Reef uh, and on the edges of the reefs. Uh, East Matagorda Bay has been uh, fair for trout, but better for wading. Those the Mid Bay Reefs are holding th throwing topwaters and uh, bass assassins like, love throwing that plum and chartreuse bass assassin and the Morning Glory bass assassin. Uh, the Rockport uh, plug and soft plastic bites been tough at times, but the best bites been around sunrise and at sunset. Weak tides lately have uh, afforded the, the slower bite. Redfish action, August is normally just a tough month to find redfish consistently in the shallows. That's because the, the tides are low and the water's boiling. Pump a little more water in the bay, which we're starting to get right now, and temperatures uh, cool down just a little bit with a little return to southeast winds and uh, a, a, about another foot of water with the tide, and, man, the redfish are, are going to turn on. Waders along the east end of uh, East Matagorda Bay found redfish while wading around brown cedar fats, uh, Bird Island, and Ketchaw. There's also some bruiser redfish around the log area. Of course, so Surfside, Port O'Connor, and Matagorda jetties are holding lots of redfish right now. This weekend looks good for the surf and for all the jetties. As the seas are forecasted one to two feet. So it's a good time to get out there and chase them. Photo there, the tides have been uh, below normal for the past two months. The lowest that I've ever seen in a two month period along the, uh, for the summer along the Texas coast. But we've been finding those redfish in the middle of the bay. Uh, they're out in the middle of the bay because the marshes are dry. There's no water in the back marshes. So they've got to come out in the middle of the bay. And that's what we've been doing. We've been drifting for them. 
offshore the federal red snapper season runs through august 25th but snapper fishing in texas uh, waters remains open uh throughout the year the forecast for this weekend like i said is one to two foot seas and a lot of people are going to take advantage and go uh, drop along rocks in uh you know 80 to 100 foot of water out there chunks of squid sardines rustle lures have been best those, those fish pushing 20 pounds are coming in those about 40 miles off and then in state waters more fish in the 10 to 12 pound class uh, have been about 8 to 15 miles off the beach kingfish continue to hang out around the shrimp boats uh, also wahoo and dorado are on the weed lines and good in about 200 foot of water so uh, that's all for the uh, fish bites in the middle coast region keep practicing catch uh, and release sound conservation leave more than you take for our texas bays and estuaries and just have a good time and treat treat our bays like it's your backyard. I really appreciate those conservation <clears throat> efforts, Bink. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the mirror lure hotspots from the Middle Coast region. Bink says, ensure the trout are good around Pascavallo while wading with bass assassins. The redfish are good along the north shoreline of West Matagorda Bay on live shrimp. And then if you guys wanna go offshore, with the forecast being one to two foot seas, this should be perfect to drop on a wreck or some rocks. For some red snappers, try 80 to 100 foot depths and use chunks of squid, sardines, or even maybe a piece of fish bites. Oh, that sounds fun. Ooh, I wanna, I wanna do that. Well, we have our very own Upper Fresh Region guide, Mike McFarland, live in the studio with us. You have knocked it out of the park so far. Triple well, duty. I'm so excited you're here. So let's... I'm grateful to be here. Last year I got a little nervous. I don't know if it was just sitting next to you. We oh, know. that's no. what she does to everybody. No. Or no. Just, a, just the fact of being different. Every time you know, she does. Yeah, yeah. No, she's, you're she's... meant for TV. Let's hear <laughs> yeah. your report. All right, let's tell you a little bit about what's going on with the theme first. Perfect. So that um, docks and piers, you know, the most of the lakes in the Upper Fresh region, they have boat docks. We have boat docks and quite a few piers. They can offer a lot of excellent cover and shade for big bass this time of year. It's best to always find the docks that are nearest to the deep water and docks on main lake points, docks near channel swings, ones that have ditches, drains, those are gonna produce the most consistent fishing. When you're fishing docks, always remember to hit the shaded or shadowed side of the dock and be sure to start from the outside edges and work your way underneath. So let's tell you a little bit about our bass fishing in the Upper Fresh region, starting with Ray Hubbard. Bass fishing is good there. It's the best lake we got going on. Best depth range are 15 to 22 feet of water with a drop shot rig and trick worms in watermelon candy has been the best way to catch them. My favorite trick worm is gonna be the Bass Assassin 4.5 tap out trick worm. Um, you can also use that same worm on a Carolina rig or shaky head. And you also can use the big 10 inch or 11 inch bass assassin. It's called assassin worm in green pumpkin. You might catch some bigger fish there. Moving on to Lake Levon with Kerry Thorne. Just like last week, bass are a little bit slow. It is hot in Northeast Texas. Nighttime fishing is probably your best bet, but the early mornings and late evenings, you can catch a few fish. Soft plastics and dark colors are working well there. I'm um, in the same kind of thing. Um, Carolina rig creature baits, Texas rigs. Look for that, those cooler summer type areas. My favorite lake, the lake I guide on, Lake Fork. Bass fishing there has been tough, but it's still good. If you'll stay with it, the lake is dropping. It's about one foot below full pool. Um, our temperatures are in the high 80s, low 90s, but it's good. Early morning top waters like the Berkeley Jaywalker or the Driftwalker, those can catch some fish on shallow structure. The key is to have immediate deep water. It's gotta have a break really close to that deep water or shallow water. If you find that, you can find some really, really giant bass on fork right now. The other way is big worms like the Bass Assassin, 11 inch assassin worm around submerged timber on deep structure, 15 to 20 feet. Those find success throughout the day, but be sure and stay hydrated. It's really been excessively hot in our part of the region. And I tell you one last thing before I show you a cool picture of a big old summer bass. The best color you can throw right now is red shad green glitter. The Bass Assassin red shad green glitter, but plum or plum apple will catch them too. Here's a big old fish um, that we catch uh, a lot of Lake Fork, we call it a Lake Fork special. Nice. Wow, that That's is a good a nice one. one. Yeah. How about crappie fishing? Let's tell you about some crappie. Guide Kerry Thorne says on Levon, you can find them in 10 to 25 feet of water. Any kind of structures holding fish, predominantly 15 to 20 feet has been the best depth range. Timber, brush, rocky ledges. The key is use live minnows. Get away from all the artificial, use live minnows, you'll catch some fish on Levon. Lake Fork with Jackie Wiggins. The crappie there has been good, continues to heat up this week as Lake Fork water temperatures soar. 18 to 26 
feet of water seems to be the key depth. They're suspending quite a bit. Some of them are actually hugging to the bottom as well. Laydowns are your best bet for the black crappie, and some of the white crappie are stacked up more in the brush piles. We got the same thing going on there with Jackie. He says on Lake Fork, the minnows are the key. You can catch a few fish on some of the other uh, artificial baits like jigs, crappie jigs, and plastics, but minnows are the key during the summer. Here's Jackie Wiggins with a nice catch. Nice. What else you got for us, We got Mike? some striper fishing. We got striper fishing on... Ah, uh, give me one, I'm sorry. We got striper fishing on, how did I get lost there? You're on Levon, baby. Levon, I got Levon striper fishing. And Carrie Thorne says it's kind of the same thing's been going on. Chartreuse and white lead slab spoons, tie a jig 18 inches above it. Um, you can catch two fish at the same time. Matt Cartwright on Tawakany, stripers and hybrids there are pretty good. Lake's 10 inches low. Stripers and hybrids are found schooling early and late. Slab and swim baits, slab spoons and swim baits are good. And then trolling down riggers with large swim baits and Alabama rigs are catching the big ones. Here's Matt Cartwright with some happy clients. Nice. They look happy. So what else you got for us? You got well, a little catfish there? We or what do you got, got a little catfish here, Lake Tawakany. Catfish are on the humps in 15 to 18 feet of water. They're also on the dam with cork and bobber. And on Levon, your catfish are really good on Levon. You want to use cut shad and cut bluegill in 10 to 20 feet of water. Pre-bait the holes as well for channel cats. If you want the channel cats about 5 to 15 feet of water, pre-bait the holes. And then also remember this about channel cats. Like bass, they love the shade. So look for some of those trees that are overhanging, and you'll find some more of those channel catfish on them. Now, you, the now you get to see why Ricky always has an extra <laughs> copy, because we forgot a couple pages in your report. I was like, where's both. my report? Oh, no, That's no. Right. Like, you don't have it all memorized. Job. At least it wasn't yeah. you that got me nervous this time. I just got myself nervous. Oh, I no, didn't. It was no, like, no. oh, no, we're not going to do this. You're only as good as your information you got. You only did one page you when I got five pages over here. Great time right here. Thanks for having me. Such a blessing to be part of this deal. All right, bud. Good you job, good. thank you, you so much. Good. I'm gonna Thanks go ahead and take here. a look at the hot spots from the Upper Fresh region. He says for great numbers of nice sized bass, it's hard to beat Ray Hubbard right now. Fish the deep structures with bass assassins, 4.5 tap out worms used on a drop shot rig or maybe even a Carolina rig. Early and late is the best time, but if you can handle heat, you can catch them all day, guys. If you can handle the heat. Probably not. Nope. <laughs> not all day. <laughs> Why bother? Oh gosh, the Front Runner Boats Upper Coast Region is telling us how we're finding fish in the shade coming right up. But first, Dave has some fun new products to show us at the workbench. What we got over here, Dave? Oh, this thing looks beautiful. Ooh, that's I know huge. everything's gonna want to eat this, including me. I would, I would eat it, but the, hook, eat it. the hooks are gonna be. Rick would probably problem. eat it. Rick eats anything. A little problematic with the hooks on there. Eh, it's a fine problem. We'll be back. The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Abu Garcia, Fish to Win, Fenwick, Feel Everything, Diamond Fishing Products, Our Reputation is on the Line, Island Lures, Tournament Tackle, Turn on the Bite Anytime, Tie on a Mirror Lure, Front Runner Boats, Performance Built Offshore Fishing Boats, Made in the USA, and StarTron. Start, run, and store with StarTron. Today's Power Pole Tip of the Week is becoming more stealth with your poles. Now guys, think about this. We have three speeds on our power poles, and the one thing that we need to understand is that we can manipulate those speeds. We can go fast, medium or stealth mode. Now whenever I'm making a move from an oyster bar over to a point, and I know I'm only going to pick up the poles a few inches at a time, I simply click it into the stealth mode so that I can keep the noise level down to a very, very quiet approach. Now you guys that love the bass fish and you're fishing fish that are on beds, that approach is the same thing. Make sure that you go into the stealth mode so that you can sneak up on those beds, put your poles down and the bass doesn't know you're there. Keep in mind that by simply manipulating the speeds through your multifunction switch or through the app using the key fob, this will make a great approach and that's today's Power Pole Tip of the Week.
Well, as you guys know, trolling the edge is certainly something I would never do without Taco Marine. And we're here at the workbench. You know what, Dave? Let's talk a little bit about our sea sucker. Yep, yeah, that's, that's the sea sucker recycle waste band unit at the kit. And what this does, you know, there's always cans and plastic water bottles, you know, nowadays, plastic water bottles everywhere. And, right. and, it, and as hot as it is, people are just going through them. So one guy can go through 10 or 12 bottles in a day. Right. So, you know, it, there's, they're always laying around if you don't have a place to put them. And this is the place to put them. You know, you get your sea sucker recycle waste band right. kit. And that's what holds the little <laughs> those little clips there. Yeah, hold. they give you extra ones that you yeah, put in the pouch. Exactly, and, they, and you hold, hold that clip, clips your uh, reusable bag onto the the wire the, the rim there and these have 120 pounds each you can also get a smaller one with just one uh, this is the bigger one with the two and the, the, this large one is 12 by 7 the smaller one is 6 by uh, 4 and you know these have 120 pounds of pull so you're not you can put them on a tailgate if you're at a you know if you're you know doing a tailgate party you can put them on the side of the boat you can put it at on the, the sandbar console. you can put it on the outside of yeah, the side you put of the it boat on a, so you don't have to get back in the water yeah, to bring your trash yeah you put it on the side of your RV wh wherever you want to you know collect your trash this is a perfect uh pump it up until the orange spot right disappears right perfect for, you know for a movable uh garbage can that you can put anywhere you want so, where do we go to find it uh, it's also they come in black and blue i mean oh, nice. black and white and you can get the uh, different colored uh, bags as well oh so, black and white the plastic correct seasucker.com nice. you can right. get one of those next we have uh, some fish bites these are the the new ones with the longer lasting e easy crab in the blue this is a new color and everything and uh if you're you know wanting to catch something that'll eat a crustacean, which is just about everything, me included, then uh, you can use this fish bites to do it. Uh, they come in a half inch wide strip that's 12 inches long. You cut it, you know, get a, get a pair of sharp scissors. You can cut it into any kind of shape that you want to put it on a jig. If you want to just fish it on a plain hook, you know, you can cut it in little pennants. You can leave it long and put it on a cobia jig if you Buck want tail, to. Yeah. What, it, what it has in it is uh, these amino acids and the, and the crab flavoring that get the fish to bite. You know, it's a patented uh, special process that they use and they put, they put all that stuff on a, a cloth uh, grid inside there so that that stuff does not come off. When you put it on your hook, it's, it's gonna stay on there until it wears away or you cut it off. You know, that, that cloth binder in the middle holds everything on. So it attracts fish to it, and then when they eat it, they can't get it off your hook. So it's a great thing to put on on top of bait or with your bait or with no bait at all. Uh, just use your fish bites there, the longer lasting easy crab blue. It has a sweet taste to they it. They do. Yeah. Fishbites.com. I would never ask a fish to eat something I wouldn't try myself. Well, I understand. Okay, I understand. so tell me about this. I'm not trying it. I was about to say, next on your menu is the Berkeley <laughs> Driftwalker 90. The saltwater heart how bait. Badass you know, this little bait. This is. is a it is. It's a it is badass. It's a the new size. It's got that slim profile. It's a finesse topwater bait for when it gets really slick calm. And you don't want to be scaring them away with a big one, you know. And and you know, I've always said, you know, I like this slim profile top water plugs, especially when I'm fishing for redfish because they have that mouth underneath, and when they come up with that big old head, that less buoyant, smaller profile goes right down their face a lot easier than a great big one will. Right. So it has an internal weight that makes it cast a long way. Uh, it comes in all different kinds of patterns and colors and it's got a nice little scale pattern on them as well for right. texture they got the sticky sharp fusion 3x 19 hooks on there uh rust proof so uh, and it comes out in september of 2023 so cool that's a great looking little bait i can't wait to use it so i think it'll catch everything you that won't you be want using to catch. this one <laughs> i know because <laughs> i got stuff to do with it i got you last last but not least here we got the uh, trailer coupler lock uh you know if you're at the ramp and you or you, you leave your trailer someplace and it's sitting there all by itself, you, you want to put make sure it's not going to go away. And, and this is a great way to put on your coupler there and it keeps people from messing with your stuff. And uh, it's really nice because it's corrosion resistant. It's a screw type lock. It's incredibly easy to use. You put it on there and screw it down and take the key away and nobody's getting into your trailer or moving your trailer. Rugged uh, construction, resist tampering. 
and uh, compact, and it's really lightweight too. So if you want to store it someplace, it's not that big a deal. So where do we go? THMarine.com to get right. your uh, trailer coupler locks. Fishbites.com, BerkeleyFishing.com. Correct, and Seasucker.com. Great job over here trolling the edge, Boom, Dave. boom. Well, you know what, Rick? You better uh, keep those fish bites out because in all these years, I've never actually tried it, and you're always eating them, so they must be good. I'm going to try one at the end of the show, okay? Okay. Great. Okay, great. <laughs> the Front Runner Boats Ever Coast Region is the place to be if you plan on being landbound. So, Captain Carl, tell us where to go. Hey, guys. Well, we're in week 21 of the Texas Insider Fishing Report, and the near shore fishing has been really good this month. Starting out with the jetties over there in Freeport, always the beaches in Galveston, the bite is really on. And if you're looking for a spot to fish and you don't have a boat or you don't want to dump a bunch of gas in your boat, go to the. it's easier just to go to the beach. There's so many places right now. So here's a lowdown on that. The jetties over at Sabine Pass are full of fish. Bumping out to the beachfront over there, the big bull reds are chasing bait all along the beachfront. There's really nice trout coming in the surf. We're catching on um, live shad. Heading west over to Texas City Dyke, there's a bunch of beach access over there. There's picnic areas, there's bait shops, there's places to buy food, drinks. There's most everything you would want for a day of fun fishing. So, you know, there's fishing knock. There's kayak access over there, Galveston, Bolivar, Texas City. Um, you know, the Upper Coast has so many places uh, for anglers, wading, boat ramps, I could go on. So what we're saying is anywhere you go, you're gonna find a great spot. You know, Penn Reels makes great combos to fit all these types of land-based fishing. And these products are built to withstand harsh conditions, not just offshore, but inshore, the sand, the salt water, the high heat. So guys, grab a cooler, some fish bites, head to the water and catch some of these beautiful fish out there. Today, I've got a picture of a uh, little Miss Elizabeth with a nice trout she caught off the deck. Oh, there's oh, little Miss Elizabeth. Go, girl. All right, what else you so, got? We got red fish, and you know, the heat has continued here just like that red drum bite has. And if that's your target species, well, you're in luck, guys, because as we touched on in the last few weeks, it's hard to run anywhere around this area not to find some fish. There's big schools of slot reds over in Sabine Lake, all the way west down to Chocolate Bayou, and are out there along the Freeport jetties. The bull reds still remain strong on the beachfront all along the coast. Live and fresh shad have been our go-to bait. We rig them on a six-aught trocar, trocar live bait hook and simply freeline them out in the current. Now, don't forget your Bahio sunglasses in these bright, sunny days. Uh, Captain Rick introduced me to a new pair of NATOs the other day. Now they're my two favorite glasses for sight fishing. Um, speaking of that, top water uh, plastics um, are our artificial choice for early mornings. Shrimp on a popping cork will work all day as, as usual. Night fishing has also become some anglers' choice with these extreme hot days. But that Berkeley Chapo in bone and the mirror lure Merodite in broken glass has been the top lure of the week. And I have a picture today of uh, Mr. Gary with a nice redfish. All so, right, let's go offshore. Bumping, bumping offshore, guys. Um, we're talking about Vermilion Snapper, we call B-liners. Last week, I've seen a lot more Vermilion Snapper at the tables. And as we go further through the year, it gets warmer, we're gonna catch more. And that works great because as the red snapper season goes out, it gives you a snapper species to target here. You get to keep more of these fish. Now, check your local daily bag limit. Be sure in your area that you're in compliance. Please don't take my word for it, but these tasty little guys will be found in really tight structure, like big rock piles. Uh, the reef falls, a lot of the man-made reefs carry, you know, hold a lot of these fish now. I use a smaller eagle claw, like a four or five out hook is a good size. I cut squid into small strips and I thread it on the hook. Like we talked about, top it with a little piece of fish bites just to keep it on there. You'll get more than one strike because these guys are little bait robbers. But um, when you look on the fish finder, you'll see these. They look like a little cloud of bait and it's usually these bee liners. Um, right off the main structure, usually the current, current will take them off just a little bit, but that's your target. And uh, we have a picture today of Mr. Clinton with a pretty little bee liner. Nice. All right, one more to go, bub. Nice hat. Let's talk about some deep drop and talfish. Um, in the 800 to 1200 foot range, we have brought in some really nice talfish in the last week. It's a great start to getting rigged, I would have to say. So get you an R&R &R deep drop rig. These things have strong hooks, swivels, they have glow skirts, everything you need this setup is gonna hold big fish on a deep drop. Now, angler to angler, you know, your bait is gonna be different. I use squid and I, I use a lot of cut fresh bait fish. 
that I catch. Um, now, don't forget to tip the hooks like we just talked about. This is getting to be, I know we talk about it every week. Don't forget. I'm going to tell you, it's going to really improve your hookup ratio if you have some fish bites along with your bait. Plus, if you're dropping in a 1,000 feet like we do, you'll lose bait on the way down, so you'll be fishing on credit and not even know it. So, use a large weight on this rig. I put two lights, one on top, one on bottom. Not really a proven thing, but I like it, so it looks cool. <laughs> now, when you get a strike, they'll pull up fast. Ease up a little bit and watch. See if you get another uh, hit or two. And then come up some more. Sometimes you'll get, you know, get two or three of these beautiful fish. And uh, just watch your speed as you come up, too. Because you can pull these fish off if you come up too fast. Be about the picture so, uh, quick. We have a uh, foul fish here on an r, &R deep drop rig. Our picture today. All right, bud. Thank you nice. so much. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the Upper Coast Hotspots from Carl's region. He says, inshore, chasing bull reds in the surf, rigged with a 6-0 trocar hook and live shad. And then offshore, vermilion snappers fishing rock piles and 140 to 180 feet of water rigged with a slip rig, slip sinker rig, mm. use uh, cut squid and some fish bite chunks. Okay, fish bite chunks. Everyone's talking about fish bites tonight. I love it. I think it. everybody needs to try a piece. While you're getting them ready for us, for our dinner, whatever it might be, a snack. Just a little lick. Do you want to try? Come on, you're here, you gotta try. Thanks for being here, Mike. I'm, I'm going either. to. Okay, here, let's try it. Lick. Dave? I've, I've had some. Yes. Thank you, I'm full. <laughs> I've had Interesting. Plenty. It's great. See you guys next week. It tastes like mashed potatoes. <laughs> it's fishy.